Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Kim. It's good to have Kim back with us. Um, last week, <clears throat> they about fired the music director that they had last week. So, Kim, it's good to have you back. And uh, you're right. Uh, uh, thank you for preparing, preparing our hearts because it appears at times in our lives that the Lord is late, but He is always on time according to his time and according to today we're worshiping on his time and according to my watch it's only 10 thir almost 10 30 so i have another hour and a half to preach to you today but um it's good to see you and if you are here the very first sunday i've ever preached you kind of get that reference so but it's good to be with you, good to worship the Lord. I have a few things I'd like to say before we turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. I want to remind you that this week you have a opportunity that some people around the world do not have. In fact, many people around the world do not have. And that is to vote, to cast your vote for those who are in authority over you. That puts a little different perspective on our text we're going to be looking at in just a few moments. But I do want to encourage you, please take the opportunity that you have been given by God to exercise your right to vote. So you'll be praying through whom you're going to vote for. I want to urge you as your pastor and as a fellow believer to vote according to what the scripture says, according to morals, according to conscience, not what your pocketbook says or what you think um, our country needs, but what the Lord knows this country needs. So I just want to encourage you to vote. Um, led by the Lord and what His Word says. I also want to just remind you about our truelife.org cards. It's been a while since I have mentioned these. These are a great resource for you. They are a tool for you to share the faith. And many of you say, well, I, I'm not good at sharing my faith. Well, we're, we're giving you a cop-out. We're giving you something you can just take, hand it to someone without sharing the gospel, and just want to ask you to invite them to our Easter service. We'll have our Easter cantata, our sunrise service. We'll even feed them in between those two. So just take one of these cards and um, please pass them out in the next couple of weeks. So we'll make sure there's some in the back, there's some up at the church office, and we'll get those to you. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I would encourage you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. If you did not bring a Bible with you, please reach under your seat. Hopefully you'll find a Bible there. And turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. It's toward the end of the Bible. We've been walking through 1 Peter. If you are a guest with us, we're so thankful you've chosen to join us for worship. We're just making our way through 1 Peter passage by passage. And this week we come to a passage of Scripture that instructs us concerning our relationship with the government. So we're looking at how we're supposed to respond to those who are in authority over us. And really, Peter is about to go into a long section of about submission and authority. Today we're only looking at the first section about our relationship to the government, but next, in the next couple of weeks we're going to take a, a, a time off in about two weeks for Easter in the week before Palm Sunday. But when we pick back up in First Peter, we're going to be looking at submission in relation to slaves, slavery in the New Testament, and then also wives and husbands as we begin chapter 3. So I'm definitely swimming upstream when I talk about submission in our culture. And we're going to be correcting, hopefully, some misunderstandings about what the New Testament says about submission. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, 1 Peter chapter 2, we're going to look at verse 13 through 17. Peter is writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I remind you that this is not a suggestion, but this is an imperative. Verse 13, submit to every human authority. Some translation says every human institution. But the Greek literally says submit to every human creature. And I'll explain that in just a few moments. But submit to every human authority because of the Lord, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to the governors as those sent out by him to punish those who do what is evil and to praise those who do what is good. 
For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of the foolish people by doing good. As God's slaves, live as free people, but don't use your freedom as a way to conceal evil. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we ask that you would speak to our hearts. We're addressing a topic that many of us don't like to talk about. We don't like submission. So, Father, we ask that you would help us to see the beauty in your order of creation, how you've ordered things, and that we can see from our position of where we're at in that order how to respond to those over us, to those under us. And, Father, we ask that you would correct any misunderstandings we have regarding your word and your world and our place in it. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. When we talk about the Christian's relationship to government, there are usually two extremes. You have one person on one side that says, well, you just need to always submit in everything you do. The, the ruler, those in authority, whether it's a king, whether it's an emperor, whether it's a president, you have to blindly submit to them and follow anything they say. Then you have others on the other side and they said, no, 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 we, we are against the government. We're enemies of the state. They are are oppressing us they're persecuting us we don't want to submit to them we want to throw off the shackles from them and do what we want to do well speaking about 350 years ago one commentator said regarding this this is coming from england who he was living under a king over 350 years ago he says this concerning this verse it is one of the most false and yet one of the most common prejudice that the world has always entertained against true religion that it speaking about true religion is an enemy to civil power and government so going back over 350 years, and I would submit to you going back even further to the time of when Peter was writing, people had this idea that religion was against government. There's always this confusion of how we as Christians should react to those in authority over us because first of all we have to realize most of them are not christians we are under the authority of many who are not christians now because we're americans and we vote those into office and we're a republic we're, our position is a little different than those to whom peter is writing but still the application is very similar so first of all i want you to see why we don't like to submit to authorities why we don't like to submit to authorities because really in our culture submission is an ugly reason i mean an ugly word and um some of the reasons for that is that our hearts are bent to rebel we want to rebel against the authority we do not like submission it has this bad connotation when we hear it and this goes back to the first sin think about genesis chapter 3 where the lord spoke to adam and eve now remember in the garden god gave adam and eve everything that was good he said you can eat of any tree in the garden except this one i want you to stay away from this tree you can have everything else. I provided everything for you but that one tree. Satan comes and tempts them and says, no, 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 no. God's not trying to protect you. He's trying to keep you from becoming like God. And so because they wanted to become like God, they wanted to throw off his authority, they disobeyed the Lord's command and they sinned against him. And that has been the story from Genesis chapter 3 onward, we do not like authority. We, we want to rebel against it. Our hearts are bent toward rebellion. Have you ever been asked to do something by a parent? Think back when you're smaller, if you're an adult, or maybe by an employer, your supervisor, a boss. Have you ever been asked to do something by them and you were really... When you got down to it, you're willing to do whatever they ask. But because of the way they ask it, or because they were just asserting their authority over you, you rebelled against it. You did not want to do it. Raise your hand if you've ever done that. I mean, I'm, I'm the first one. All I have to do is think back to when I was a teenager. 
and realize, you know, there's some things I didn't mind going and doing what my parents said, but because they, because they asked me to do it, if they wouldn't have asked me to do it, I'd have probably done it anyway. But because they told me to go clean up my room or go wash the dishes or go wreck the yard or go pull the weeds, I didn't want to do it. It's because our hearts are naturally bent to rebel against authority. Authority is a good thing. And that's what sin does. Sin takes good things and twists them, perverts them to their own end, distorts them. And we see that in the authority figures and those who are to be submitting to authority figures. We want to use our freedom to do what we want to do. Look what the Apostle Peter reminds us of in verse 16. As God's slaves, now we don't like to hear that. Some translations say as God's servants, but the reality is we are servants of God and we're better be thankful we're his slaves because if we were slaves of God, we'd be slaves of sin. But as God's slaves, live as free people. So he's reminding us, you've been freed from the power of sin, but don't use your freedom as a way to conceal evil. Don't, don't be those who just want to cast off restraint and cast off the submission. But he says, don't use your freedom as a way to conceal evil. Use your freedom to do good. You've been freed from the power of sin. Therefore, use your freedom to do good. Why does Peter say this? Because we, we have this natural bent to want to rebel against authority. Submission is a part of every Christian's life. And many of us misunderstand biblical submission. But in the, in the Gospels, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus corrects this. When he is speaking to the mother of James and John, where she asks, Why don't you let my, one of my sons sit on the left of you when you go into glory and one on the right? And Jesus says, You have no idea what you're asking. And the other disciples heard that and they were a little upset that James and John would try to weasel their way in right beside of Jesus when he sits on his throne in glory. And Jesus speaks to them because they misunderstand authority. And he says to them, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. So what he's saying is you know that those pagans, those outside of the faith, want to exercise authority as lords over those under them. And he says... Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So what Jesus is reminding us of is the reality that he came to serve. Authorities are meant to serve those under them. They're not dictators. They're not there to just use the people for their own personal gain but they are there to serve and many times we misunderstand what true biblical authority is but we also misunderstand what true biblical submission is it's one of those words that just rub us the wrong way why why do we often view those in submission as weaker in just a few weeks we're going to see how peter commands the wives to submit to their husbands now if you think that means that they're just they're not as smart as their husbands or they're weaker then you've misunderstand what the apostle peter says you misunderstand what biblical submission is or if you think that somehow kings are stronger than those under them then you've misunderstood what biblical authority is biblical submission is or if you try to think in the church those in leadership positions are stronger than those who are submitting then you've misunderstood biblical submission and biblical authority there are a lot of bad ideas concerning authority and submission but a submission is simply yielding to the authority voluntarily not forcing someone to submit to you but it's voluntarily submission to someone else because of the order that's been set by God submission is a part of every Christian's life it was a part of Jesus's life you cannot get around the fact that Jesus submitted to the Father's will. And we're told in Philippians chapter 2, he lowered himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. Jesus was not weak, but he voluntarily laid down his life, submitted to the authorities over him in order to redeem us from all of our sins. 
Why, and second point this morning, why we should submit to authorities. As I worked through this text, I saw three reasons that jump, just jump right off the page. First of all, submission to authorities is part of God's design. Government is a gift from God, and a lack of government is a dangerous thing. A lack of government is a very dangerous thing. Government is a gift from God. Now, growing up, I very rarely heard anyone say, Man, I am so thankful for our government. I don't know about you, but down at the store where I grew up, where I, I was around a lot of older men who complained consistently about the government. They thought they knew how to fix everything. Looking back, I should have said, well, why don't you run for president? And in fact, I think some, some people did suggest that they run for president. And they're like, oh, it would just corrupt me. All politicians are corrupt. But we have to remember all politicians are not corrupt. Many of them are corrupt. But uh, many, a lot of people who are not politicians are corrupt also. So a lot of people outside of the government are corrupt. We forget that because we don't like authority. So anytime they force something on us, they put a new speed limit, we get upset. We have to buckle our seatbelts now, which I've got a seatbelt ticket before. But I didn't argue with the state trooper who pulled me over. Submission to authorities is a part of God's design. 1 Timothy chapter 2, the Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy and listening very carefully to his words. He says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Listen to those things that should be made for all people. Petitions, you're asking things. Prayers, you're, you're, you're asking the Lord. You're giving him requests. Intercessions, you're praying on behalf of others. And thanksgiving be made for all people for kings and for all those in authority that we may why he gives us the reason that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness so the the apostle paul reminds us in the passage of there in timothy that god has ordained government those who are in authority over you in order to keep peace so that you may live a quiet life in all godliness and holiness. Not so you can have a fat pocketbook. Not so you can have a nice house with a two-car garage and everything. But there's nothing wrong with having that. But that's not the reason you have government. It's so that you can get tax breaks and have everything. It's so that you can live a godly and holy life. This is good, the Apostle Paul says, and it pleases God as our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. It blows my mind that people who have read this passage can go out and say, I'm going to vote for this candidate over here because I think he can do this for our country. He can do this for my pocketbook, not because I think it will make us more holy or not because he has moral conviction. We should submit to authorities because it's a part of God's plan. Submission to authorities pleases God. Look at what this passage says. Sometimes we skip over this. Verse 15, for it is God's will. People are always asking the pastor, what is God's will for my life? Look very carefully here. It is God's will that you silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. This verse is in the context of submitting to authorities and what Peter is reminding us of here is the reality that when you submit to the authorities, you will in turn bring a witness against those who are slandering you, who are slandering the faith, slandering the Lord. In fact, you will silence them. And this pleases the Lord. Because when you submit to the authorities, you are in essence submitting to God. You are submitting to the authorities out of submission to God. For instance, I can remember growing up when I was going to school, I was under the authority of my dad. Now, if I were to go to school and rebel against the teacher, which I often did, unfortunately, and just by talking or standing up or getting in an argument with someone, as I did that, I realized when I got home, I would get in a lot of trouble. 
I got in trouble at school, but I got in more trouble at home. Why? Because I was under the authority of my parents. So I eventually learned the lesson that as I go to school, I want to submit to my teacher because my dad wants me to submit to my teacher. And my dad realizes this authority figure, the teacher, is good for my life. It's order. It's not good for a teacher to step out of a class that's filled with about 15 fifth grade boys. Just like it's not good for there to be no government in our society. So as we submit to our Heavenly Father, we must submit to those in authority over us. And when we reject their authority, we're rejecting the authority of God the Father. Third reason why it's good for us to submit to authorities is because submission to authorities will silence the foolish. Or submission to authorities uncovers evil. Now let me explain. Because when you turn on a light, darkness flees. As we live lives of doing good, the, the darkness in others' lives will be exposed. So those who are outside the faith, those who are slandering Christians, will be exposed as slanderers and as foolish and as ignorant people as we do good and we're held to this higher standard that Peter holds us to in this passage. Have you ever noticed how loud ignorant people are? All you have to do is watch the news over the last several months and realize how loud and ignorant and foolish people really are. The more they lack knowledge, the louder they get. Think about the accusations and slanders hurled at Christians. Think about the names we're called by those outside of the faith. We're called bigots. We're called simple-minded. We're called those who are behind the times. Those who are on the wrong side of history. Those who are intolerant of others. But how are we to respond to them? Peter reminds us here, by doing good. Not by slandering back. Not by reviling back at them. But we are in contrast to do good. And when we are in the right, when we are living righteously, when we are living righteous lives, Peter reminds us they will be silenced. They'll have no justifications for what they say. Too often Christians try to yell back and they get in this yelling match. Well, no, I'm not. No, you're not. But I know you are. But what am I? You know, we, we want to we want to slander back. We, we get in this name-calling fight instead of simply doing good. Too often, Christians fail to live lives of moral integrity. It does no good for you to call out the sin of others if you are not living a life of moral integrity. Thirdly, the third point, and this is the last point, when we, because this answers the question that you may all be asking, when should we not Submit to authorities. So for the first two points, I've been stressing the fact that we need to submit to authorities. But there is the reality that there comes a time when we are not to submit to authorities. But we don't really see that clearly in this passage, or do we? As I read the passage to begin with, I said in verse 13, the Greek originally says, submit to every human creature. It's implying here every human authority or every human institution, but Peter is making a play on words and he's reminding us that those who are in authority over us are simply creatures. They're not the creator, but they're the created ones. And he's telling us that there are times when we should not submit to authorities. When it comes to us having to go against what pleases the Lord, if we were to submit to those authorities. When the authorities assume the position of God, when they forget that they are created beings and they have a role to serve, a dictator forgets that he is not God, that there is a higher authority than him. Our president, whom I am thankful for, I pray for, I very rarely agree with, but I pray for him, According to the words that we find in and Timothy chapter 2, that we're to pray for those in authority over us. While I'm thankful for him, I realize there's someone in authority over him. 
over any authority God has control. And when, when that individual or that group of people who is in authority over us forgets that they are created and they're not God themselves, they're the ones, they think they're making the laws instead of interpreting the laws and applying the laws. When they forget that they are created ones, then I believe we have an obligation to throw off submission from them. Because we must submit to our Heavenly Father. Second, second time when we're not to submit to authorities is when obeying authorities means disobeying God. I think our principle is found in this passage where verse 15, the Apostle Peter says, For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of foolish people. How? By doing good. That little prepositional phrase, by doing good, that is our guiding principle when it comes to submitting to authority. When submission to an authority will cause us to do something that is evil or wicked or contrasted with good, then we must not submit to them, but we submit to God and His Word. We ask ourselves, will this harm others? Will this bring shame and reproach on the name of Christ? Will this hurt His church? Will this shame a witness for Jesus? And if so, then we must resist the authority who's trying to get us to do something and we must submit to the higher authority, God himself. And there is a difference, for instance, for you to go down the road and say, well, the speed limit says 65, but I really want to go 70. That's not submitting to authority. And there's a good reason. And when you go 70, you're putting someone else's life in danger. Contrasted with that, so that's a good law. A bad law is the law recently passed in the city of Charlotte concerning the gender-neutral bathrooms. Doing good is our guiding principle. Therefore, when we come across a law given by man that would force us to do something against God's law, then we submit to God rather than man. So we're not asked to submit to them when they're going against God's law. Or think about when they ask us to approve of abortion. History is full of Christians that had the conviction that the government is asking them to do something that God's word is asking them not to do. And therefore they cast off the restraint of others and they said we are going to submit to God instead of to man. But in order to do that, you must know God's word. The sad reality is that our country is filled with people who say we believe this book. They say this book is our guiding principle. But they have no idea what this book says. You must know what God says. When should we not submit to the authorities? When it goes against what pleases the Lord and when it calls us to, us to disobey the Lord. And lastly, when it, call, when it means we will harm others. Look at verse 17 and we'll close with this. Peter is wrapping everything up. He's trying to tie this passage together and he says, Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, Honor the emperor. I think this is kind of a good guiding principle also. He's saying as you look around, law should help you to honor everyone. You should respect others. You should remember that every single person, whether they're a Christian or not a Christian, are made in the image of God. So remember that when you slander other people. We're told in Ephesians chapter 6 that our war is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of darkness. Remember that our war is not against those who are deceived by the wicked one, but our war is with the wicked one, with Satan himself, not with those who are caught up in his lies. So remember that, Christian, as you stand there trying to hurl insults right back at them. Remember that as you pray for and thank God for those who are in authority over us. 
They may be deceived by the evil one. So instead of slandering our president, I want to encourage you to pray for our president. How many of you here, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, I want you to ask yourselves this question. How many of you here have complained about your president? I'm one of them. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. But then you've also prayed for your president. I hope you've prayed for your president a lot more than you've complained against him. Because your complaining does no good for this country. But your prayer may save the soul of our president. It may save the many souls of those in authority over us. So instead of complaining, Christian. Now if you're not here today and you're not a Christian, this verse is not directed to you. But if you are here, you have no right to complain against our government if you are not on your knees before God asking God to change His heart. But we don't know that because we don't know what the Word says. We don't know that Paul says, pray for those in authority over us. We forget that these words written by the Apostle Paul in Timothy and these words written by Peter was from a different context. An oppressive ruler. Who was oppressing them? We think we've got it bad. Woe is me. Our country's getting so bad. It's time for a little history check. They had it a lot worse than we did. There were slaves, as we're going to see in just a couple weeks, in this context. And how do we deal with that? How are slaves to respond to those who are over us? But we get a boss or we get a supervisor who we just don't like his personality and we want to rebel against him. We want to slander him. We want to make fun of him. We want to do everything we can to to, to hurt his feelings. Why? Should we not submit to the authorities? when they cause us to go against God's word. And when they do, we respectfully decline to do what they ask us to do. We don't raise our fists at them. We don't point in their faces. We don't say, you can't tell me what to do. But we respectfully submit to our Heavenly Father, pray for their souls who are oppressing us and refuse to do what they're asking us to do if it causes us to go against God's command. When obeying authorities means harming others. Also, when obeying authorities means not loving the brotherhood. We are the family of God. We are to lift each other up. We are to protect each other and we're to serve them. So I will never obey an authority if it means it were to harm you as a person, as a member of the body of Christ, because I want to love the brotherhood. I want to love those who are in the church. Then the second thing he tells us, fear God, or the third thing, fear God. This reminds me of Proverbs 29, 25, where the, where the pro, writer of Proverbs says, the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. If you fear God and His authority you will not fear man you will not be afraid of the policeman you will not be afraid of the IRS you will not be afraid of those who are in authority over you because you're submitting to a higher authority honor those who are in authority over you the day that our president became president we took on the obligation to pray for him to support him and so the next one Whoever he or she may be, we will pray for them. We will support them. And often at times we will disagree with them. And while we will make it very clear that we disagree with their philosophy, we disagree with their laws, we disagree with their moral code, we will not rebel against them. We We will always submit first and foremost to our Heavenly Father, but we will always pray for their salvation and pray for them to operate our country in a way which pleases and honors our Heavenly Father. I think it's fitting this day as we come to this text that for our time of invitation that we would have a special time of prayer for our country. We are always to be praying for our country, but we as a church, we need to come alongside each other and lift our country up together as God's people. So I'm going to ask if you're willing and you would like to come down front for you to come down front here and pray 
for our country. I'm going to ask if Brother Lonnie will uh, open up the prayer and then I will close us once everyone comes down. And you can pray right where you're at if you're able to come down front. But we're going to be praying for, the, for those who are in authority over us now and for the Lord to work through all the details to bring the right man into office later this year. So Brother Lonnie, you come.